As an interactive application, most people tend to prefer to run SeekMonk locally on their desktop machine, but they also find that when they initially get their sequencing results back from their sequencing service, that those large files may often be on a remote Unix system where interactive access may be limited or if it's present it might be very slow. So trying to run remote SeekMonk sessions to import data can be a bit of a pain. Also, if they want to import the data locally, then the time taken to transfer sort of large BAM files to their local machine just to do the import, at which point they're immediately deleted, is also a bit of a pain. So to try and make this process smoother, we've written a command line importer for SeekMonk project files, which allows you to take a set of BAM files, create a single more compact SeekMonk project file, and then all you need to do is to transfer that single file to your local machine to start working with your data. The large files can then stay on your remote system uh, and never need to transfer. I'm going to show you how this works. I've got a set of three BAM files here. Uh, and I'm going to import those using the SeekMonk import program into a project file. So uh, SeekMonk is already installed on this machine and SeekMonk import comes as part of the standard SeekMonk installation. So if I just bring up the help file for this. So there are a few options to SeekMonk import. The ones that we have to supply, we have to tell it which genome we want to use as the basis for the project. For this to work, the genome must already be imported into a genomes folder on this machine. So you'll have needed to have run a SeekMonk session for long enough just to do the basic setup and to get the genome imported. Uh, we specify the name of the output file that we want the project to go into. By default, the program will look into the BAM files that you're importing and will set the usual default import options. So this is exactly the same as it does in the interactive application where if you're importing RNA-seq data, it will put the uh, spliced flag on so that it splits up spliced reads into the exonic parts. Uh, it also applies a MAPQ cutoff filter by default, so again, the default is a value of 20, but you can modify that. The same thing is true in the non-interactive importer. Uh, if you don't specify anything you'll just get uh, the defaults that you would have got in the interactive application but you can specify minus minus spliced or minus minus unspliced to force the splicing behavior when importing and you can specify minus minus map queue and a value to set uh, the map queue cutoff value that's used during the import. Okay so let's have a go at that in the data that we're going to import here. So if I do seekmonk import minus minus genome, in this case these uh, files were mapped against the mouse grcm38 genome. So uh, I need to put quotes around this just because mus musculus has a space in it. grcm38 uh, my out file is going to just be called test.smk and then I'm going to import all the BAM files, so I'll just do star.bam. Okay, that will now start up a non-interactive session and start parsing my data files. Um, I'll trim the video at this point so you don't just sit and watch it importing for ages, but I'll just let that complete. Okay, so the import's now completed. Uh, in this case, I didn't get any import warnings uh, when these files came in, but if uh, any of those had been produced, then after the parsing line for each individual sample, I would have got another line telling me how many import warnings there'd been for that sample. Uh, in this case, that's not something I need to worry about. If I look in the folder, I should now also see that my SeekMonk project file has been created. and that that file is now relatively small, so even from these three BAM files, it's only a 79 megabyte file that I need to transfer to my local machine to actually be able to do it. These are very small BAM files anyway, but this will be much more compact than the size of the total files. Um, I'll just open that up so you can see what's in there. So in this case, I'm going to run it on my Unix machine, but you could transfer this to a local folder. And if I go and find that file and open it. You'll see that the data files have all been imported. You'll see that they'll have been set to be visible in the main view and you should then be able to open those up 
see all the files and now start working with this the same as you would with any other SeatMap project. So hopefully this is something you'll find useful uh, to get your project started more quickly.